Welcome back to another episode of Crazy Nice Homes. Today we're here in Pongo to see a five-room HDB modern contemporary design. Here's an interior design equation for you. Add in a splash of sophistication, a sprinkle of coziness, and a dollop of ID brilliance, and what do you get? A house of your dreams. Hi, Chad. Hi, Lester. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks for having me today. Uh, so, Chad, let's begin. Tell me a bit more about this space. What's the theme and the inspiration? Okay, the theme for this space is actually modern contemporary. The inspiration is actually based on the client's personality and character. Okay, how they go about their daily life routine actually determines the space, the circulation of the space. As you can see, there are a lot of storage cabinets and things like that, but it's nothing too overpowering. This is done by using the play of colors. Sounds great. So shall we check out the house? Sure, let's go. So let's start with the cabinetry. So usually, people usually typically use wood. Um, in this case, it's a shade of grey with textures. Yeah. Um, the idea is we wanted to go for something that is a bit of monochrome colours. Uh, play with the different shades of grey, black, and white. We wanted to be very sensitive to the materials. That's why you see that there's some grains, but nothing too over fanciful. Just very subtle grains going on, but mostly on textures. So if you look at the backing at behind the, the display cabinet, okay, because there'll be light, lightings uh, shooting down from the top, right? So this actually highlights the texture. It gives it that 3D feeling. So nothing is too flat. So let's talk about the fourth ceiling, and then I realized that there's a sheet of glass here. Yeah, uh, it's actually a mirror. So the idea of placing the mirror there is actually to reflect and double up the ceiling height visually because we can't do it physically. So it sort of gives the illusion that the ceiling is higher. Okay, so coming out from the mirror is actually this uh, laminated ceiling. Okay, what we, the same method that I use for this space is actually reflected in the pantry as well. Uh, we wanted to segregate the space visually. Uh, nothing too physical, no platforms and things like that. No physical walls. Uh, reason being, the clients have young kids running around. So platforms are usually tripping hazards for young kids. So instead of platforms, we actually do a ceiling above. Simple textures makes a lot of difference in the space. Okay, we have to be very careful when we play around with textures because uh, it has to have a good balance. It cannot be too much, it cannot be too little. If too little, it looks like it's a colored wall. But uh, if it's too much, the whole thing can be too messy. Oh, great. So I, just a right touch, fantastic. So let's talk about the dining table. Was this specially chosen? Yes, this is actually a, a natural Rainforest tree trunk. Okay. They just slice it, and then okay. they actually uh, do a stain and lacquer over it and sand it before it becomes a dining table. So this is the middle of the trunk? Yeah, so there's only one piece that looks exactly like this out there. Very, very unique, right? So can I just find out the price of something like this? This is about 700 Oh wow, $700 only? So I love the expensiveness of this area. So you have a bar counter, this is an open concept kitchen. We got a kitchen, we got a pantry area. So what's the idea behind this? Okay, so we actually knocked down the walls for the kitchen uh, for two reasons. One is to actually um, create a pantry area and also to make the kitchen bigger. Okay, so the entire space of the house, even for the living room, the space feels a lot bigger with an open concept kitchen. Okay, uh, as for the pantry area, right? Okay, you see that there's a ceiling above. That is the same as what we did for the living area. With a lot of textures. Correct. Okay, this is this is to segregate the space again. Okay. The owners are coffee people. Uh -huh. So it, it's sort of to make something like a cafe look for them. Okay. To, to, to feel for them like to make their, their coffee. Place. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but then again, we need a relationship between the pantry and the kitchen. So that's the reason for the long bar counter that you see here. Okay. This part is for the kitchen use. Okay. This part is, this part is for the pantry use. Oh, so it's like split in half? In a way? In a way, there is no uh, direct line to draw. There, there's no line that we draw clearly that this part is for the kitchen, this part is for, sure. for the dining. Uh, for so the it merges kitchen. very well together. Yeah. And also, owner, she also bakes. So she can make use of this bar counter to handle the dough and things like that before she proceeds to bake. And this is also a place where, you know, after a hard day at work, you can sit down for a nice drink. Yeah. Coffee, you really coffee or alcohol. Yeah. Can we talk about this bar, this uh, bar counter? So, what material are we looking at here? Okay, this is actually uh, some marble-inspired quartz. Okay. So it's not the usual quartz that is plain finish. There is some very natural grains to it. It's synthetic, of course, but uh, 
it, 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 it does have a very natural ring to it, so it's not too plain. So when you say marble inspired quartz, so that's uh, a bit more affordable in terms of actual marble? Uh, yes, it's a bit more affordable, but the main reason for using this is the maintenance. Because uh, marble is porous, so what happens is that if you put a cold ring or wet ring, mm -hmm. it, it sort of gets sucked into the marble, then it stays very easily. Okay. Whereas for quartz, it's man-made, it's actually a resin with uh, some quartz resin mixed together. Yes. So it's very strong, uh, it's not porous. So I it doesn't see. really stain. Okay, so it would, okay, yeah, that's the worst fear, right? If you have marble and then it stains the entire marble piece. Yeah, uh, as for a work top, it, it should be very durable. So this material here at the kitchen is also the same material here as the bar counter? It's the same material as the bar counter. Uh, same goes for the backing. The idea of the backing is uh, basically for maintenance free. Okay. Usually we, we do glass panels, but this for this case I prefer to do the quartz. Uh, so that the whole thing gels up very nicely. It's like it blends into one, right? But it, maintenance will be easy as well if you have a lot of oil backsplash. Uh, it, it's the same as uh, tempered glass, okay. if, if not even better. So can we talk about the cabinetry here as well? It's, it's the same as the... Yes, uh, it's the, the same laminate? as the living room. Uh, the thing about this laminate is that because it's textured, right? People tend to think that, okay, it's, it's very difficult to maintain this. So uh, Lester, feel free to open the doors, give the laminate a feel. This house has been around for five years already. Oh wow, okay. Uh, so it's not that difficult to maintain textured laminates after all. Wow, so five years and it still looks quite new actually. Yeah. And it feels good too. So it can last for a long time? Yes, of course, of course. If you take good care of it, it can last you a very long time. So I love the textures of the wall. I realised that the walls, they all have textures too. Yeah, this is actually wallpaper. So uh, the idea is to actually texture up the whole place so there is no exposed walls in this house. Um, but for wallpaper, we don't choose something that is way, way too crazy and over the top. Just some very subtle textures to actually complement the rest of the house. But I want to ask you here, a lot of homeowners actually have concerns about wallpapers in their home. So, you know? Yeah, wallpapers tend to peel very easily in a very humid environment. Uh, but with proper care and maintenance, uh, good quality wallpapers can last for slightly longer. We'll talk about maybe four or five years. Okay. Uh, but for most wallpapers, uh, you must be prepared to change it. Talking about maybe three, three to uh, three years. Three years. Okay. But this house has been here for five years. But the wallpaper still looks actually in good quality. Yeah. So how do you maintain uh, wallpaper? Do you Clean it with water? No, no, no. You, you cannot use water. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, you can't use water. Okay. How should we clean? Damp cloth is still okay, but try not to. You just dust it off. Oh, so you dust wallpaper. You can't use water. Yeah, don't use water. Okay. Uh, let's start. take a look at this wall. Okay. It's actually the entrance to the common toilet. Oh wow! It's a oh wow! It's it's hidden behind. Yeah, it's a sliding door. Uh, but sliding doors are not very common in a HDB flat. No, it's not common in uh, HDB flats for toilets, especially. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we use the same laminate as the rest of the house, the darker tone one. And then uh, we removed what HDB gave us, the, the door and door frame, and then we replaced it with a door one. Okay, so this frame was added in and the, the HDB door, we just removed it. Yeah. Wow, what a beautiful walk-in wardrobe. This is, a, this is such a unique feature in a master bedroom. Yeah, uh, so you know right, the homeowners, they're actually a young couple. So it's every woman's dream to have their own walk-in wardrobe in the house. Uh, the interesting thing about this walk-in wardrobe, right, is that we actually use up one room for this uh, walk-in wardrobe. We sacrifice one room. And then for the wardrobes, the doors, they are actually tinted glass. Okay, yeah, I see it's tinted dark black. The reason for this is that, uh, you know, in showroom, you always see walk-in wardrobes. Uh, it's very nice and tidy. Yes. But in a real-life situation, uh, our clothes will be just one color. Sure. And sure. it won't be once one specific type of clothes all the way. Yes. So uh, it can get a bit messy okay. if it's clear glass all the way. Oh. So uh, the idea of the dark tinted glass is to camouflage this away. Okay. But when you want to see it on the light inside, it actually it's shows what clothes are inside. inside. Okay, so this is uh, more of aesthetic to make sure it's uh, tidy and then if it's yes. untidy, you can hide it away. Exactly. So chat the million dollar question, how much does this beautiful home cost? Okay, the renovation for the whole house, including the two toilets overhaul, we're talking about $70,000. $70,000. So if you want to see more crazy nice homes, please remember to click like on this video and also subscribe right below. 
So Chad, thank you very much for showing me this beautiful home today. This is officially a crazy nice home. Bye-bye.